Quick Connect Fittings has made it a dream for high pressure aeroponics DIYers to build their own system, making it quick and easy to connect fittings to their tubing. If you don't install it correctly, they will give you problems. So first, let's discuss what is a Quick Connect fitting. The term Quick Connect refers simply to the procedure of how quickly it is to attach a tube to a fitting. The Quick Connect was introduced in the late 70s to the early 80s. Quick Connects have revolutionized how we connect tubing to our fittings. A Quick Connect is the fastest way that we can attach tubing to a fitting that is watertight. The beauty of a Quick Connect is that it's simple in design. A Quick Connect is comprised of three different components. The body, the collet, and the O-ring. Now, how, as you mentioned before, how do you use a Quick Connect? It's quite simple. So basically, you take your tubing and you insert it into your uh, fitting. And you want to make sure that the tube is inserted all the way in. It should go in about three quarters of an inch. Some will actually put a mark at the end of the tubing, three and a quarter, or three quarters of an inch away from the end, and then insert it. And then make sure that mark is close to being um, inserted into the fitting to guarantee that you inserted the tubing far enough. Now to disconnect, um, all you need to do. The, the collet here, you can see, um, needs to be pushed down into the fitting. And as you push down into the fitting, you pull the tubing out. Okay, and that will release the collet's teeth from biting in into your tubing and make it easier to remove. Now you will notice here at the end of the tubing, there are, you can almost see the teeth mark where it's kind of rough. That's where the collet bit down holding the tubing into the fitting. After using this multiple times the end of the tubing will be too rough not smooth enough for the o-ring inside to create to create a watertight seal. So if that does occur what you want to do is cut off about a half an inch the end of the tubing cut it off nice and clean and square and then use that new piece um, to insert into your quick connect and then that will create a watertight seal. So if you know that you will be removing and disconnecting a lot of uh, fittings or it be on a regular root, routine, you might want to use a different form of a connection other than a quick connect or you can create a service loop in the tubing meaning that there's some extra tubing um, so that when you do cut off a half inch it would still reach the fitting and um, you can do that to help minimize problems and leaks in your system. Just in case if you're wondering where can Quick Connects be used, well Quick Connects can be used mainly with water uh, or any type of other type of liquid that's not corrosive to the, um, to the, to the body of the uh, fitting. They can also be used in some air um, applications but mainly quick connects are designed for fluids and not really for air and they're designed to work under 200 psi that's the working pressure that quick connects will will function as you get higher in pressure you can expect to have leaks and blowouts where the tube will actually just pull away from the fitting and then you'll have a big mess um, uh, to clean up so remember, keep an eye on the pressure, make sure it does not exceed 150 or 200 PSI, and make sure that the end of the tubing is nice and clean so that when you insert it, the teeth has something to bite on and the O-ring can create a nice seal so that is watertight. What is the most common failure for Quickenex when it comes to an aeroponic system? The most common failure for Quickenex in an aeroponic system is vibration. Um, we, we have two vibrations to deal with in the aeroponic system. One is the running of the motor. So when the motor is running there's vibration. Second is the solenoids. When the solenoids fire 
and the water starts moving through the tube and then instant shuts we get a water hammer effect which causes the tube to, to, to jump. So what can we do to minimize the effect of vibration? So when vibration hits a quick connect fitting, the, the, the O-ring also will start to vibrate. And if there's any tension on the tube, it can cause that O-ring to uh, deflect or deform. And when that happens, we will get a leak. So what are some things that we can do? So one thing we can do to help minimize the effects of vibration is that be sure that to insert it, as you said, all the way in, use a locking pin to ensure that the tubing is secure to the fitting. And another thing is that if this is tied to a motor and we get it like a lot of, vi a lot of vibration, okay, what we want to do is tie this tubing down either to our shelf or to the container or tie it down, strap it down to something so that the vibration is away from the fitting. Okay, that way the fitting is not being stressed out due to vibration. Also too, if you put in like a bin, so forth, like this, you know, into your, into your system or whatever you're doing, maybe you're uh, going, going, going up or whatever, make sure the radius of the bin is wide enough so that it doesn't create a lot of tension on the fitting. So you want the fitting to be resting in its natural state like this, okay, and then have the tubing strapped down so that at least, at least this section of the tubing is in its natural rest state where there's no force forcing it to do one way or the other because if that force is transferred to the fitting any type of tension or compression on that o-ring will cause it a leak so minimize vibration at the fitting and minimize tension and stress at the fitting and that way you would be guaranteed a watertight seal so I already mentioned this before about what makes a quick connect fitting leak for an aeroponic system. One of the main reasons is due to vibration. Now, some other reasons are at the time of insulation, the, um, the fitting was not done correctly. So number one, as was mentioned before, make sure you insert the tubing all the way. When you insert the tubing into the fitting, you would insert it and you would feel some resistance. You would feel like it doesn't want to go anymore. Give it one last good effort and you should feel the o-ring sliding past your tubing you, you should feel that last resistance and push it all the way in until it stops and that's when you know that you have a good a good connection another problem is that so when you prepare your tubing um, when you prepare the end of the tubing and you cut it I recommend using either a Zacto knife or a, um, a uh, utility knife to cut your tubing is that make sure you cut it perpendicular to the tubing. Don't cut it at an angle like this. Okay, you want to cut it, the, the, the tubing perpendicular. If you cut the tubing and you notice that you got like a point at the end of your tubing, when you insert that into your quick connect, that point is going to pull on the o-ring and distort the o-ring and once that happens you're going to think that oh well okay it doesn't leak well in time that o-ring will deform to the point where it will leak so make sure that when you cut okay your tubing that you cut it perpendicular perpendicular okay and not at an angle okay you, you don't want any point um, on the end of the tubing when you insert it into the o-ring because that will pull or um, uh, bend your o-ring inside your um, quick connect. So let's talk more about the pressure rating of a quick connect fitting. The pressure rating of a quick connect fitting is based upon the temperature that it is exposed to or the temperature of the fluid running through the quick connect. So to know what pressure your your quick connect fitting can handle is 
it is dependent upon the temperature. So if your fluid for this particular connector is at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 20 C, it can handle a pressure up to 160 PSI. However, if the temperature is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the pressure rating of this fitting is 80 PSI. So the pressure has the pressure rating has dropped in half. So keep that in mind. Make sure that your nutrient does not get too warm. Otherwise, your fittings will start to fail. Another thing to keep in mind about your quick connect fittings is the tube sizing. Quick connects are actually sized by the outside diameter of your tubing. So a quarter inch tubing would need a quarter inch quick connect. A three eighth, a three eighth of an inch tubing would need a three eighths of an inch quick connect. So these are OD outside diameter. So this is the measurement that the tubing would need to be to make this fitting watertight. So make sure you're not using a metric system and combine it with the imperial system because then the tubing will either be too loose or too tight. So remember, keep the um, tubing the same size as the fitting is rated for. And that's the OD, the outer diameter of the tubing. Quarter inch with a quarter inch, three eighths inch with a three eighths three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so that concludes about our quick connect. Hopefully that will help you to make a wiser decision on how to use a quick connect and which ones to use in your system. Bye!